Welcome back to Abit Academy. If you're new, a very warm welcome to you. This channel is where you will find learning technical and IT skills is made fun and easy. In this video, we will be delving deeper into entering text within Word. Let's not delay any further. Just hit those like and subscribe buttons to help me out and we'll get started. First, let's talk about how to use different views or layouts in Word to make your work easier and more efficient. You probably know that Word is a powerful tool for creating and editing documents. But did you know that you can also change the way your document looks on the screen, depending on what you want to do with it? That's right, Word has several view options that let you see your document in different ways, without changing the actual content or format of the document. Let me give you some examples of why this is useful. Suppose you open a blank document and you want to start writing something. In that case, you might want to use the print layout view, which shows you how your document will look when it's printed on paper. This way, you can see the margins, the page breaks, the headers and footers, and other elements that affect the, way, the layout of your document. But what if you open a document that someone else sent you and you just want to read it. In that case, you might want to use the read mode view, which shows you your document in, in a full screen mode that removes the ribbon and other distractions. This way, you can focus on the text and the images, and you can also zoom in and out, change the background color, and use the navigation tools to move through the document. Or maybe you want to print your document and you want to check how it looks on the sheet. In this case, you might want to use the page layout view, which shows you a preview of a document as it would appear on the printed page. This way, you can see the actual size and position of your document's elements. And you can also make adjustments to the page setup, such as the orientation, the paper size, the margins, and the columns. As you can see, Word's view options are very helpful to make your work easier and more enjoyable. You can switch between different views depending on what you want to do with your document. You can also customise each view to suit your preferences. So how do you change the view in Word? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to the View tab on the ribbon and you'll see a group of buttons that represent the different view options. You can click on any of these buttons to change the view of your document. You can also use the shortcuts at the bottom right corner of the status bar next to the zoom slider to quickly switch between the most common views. Let me show you how it works. I have a document open here. And I'm going to change the view to see how it looks in different ways. Right now, I'm in print layout view, which is a default view in Word. You can see that this view shows me the document as it will look when it is printed with the margins, page break, and the header and the footer and other layout elements. If I want to switch to the read mode view, I can click on the Read Mode button on the View tab, or I can click on the Book icon at the bottom right corner of the status bar. You can see that this view shows me the document in a full screen mode that removes the ribbon and other distractions. I can use the arrows on the sides of the screen to move through the pages, or I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll through the document. I can also use the tools at the top of the screen to, to zoom in and out, change the background colour and access the navigation pane. If I want to switch to page layout view, I can click on the page layout button on the view tab, or I can click on the page icon at the bottom right corner of the status bar. You can see that this view shows me a preview of the document as it will appear on a printed page, with the actual size and position of the document's elements. I can also use the tool on the Page Layout tab to change the page setup, such as the orientation, the paper size, the margins, and the columns. There are also other view options that you can explore, such as Web Layout View, which shows you how your document will look when it's viewed on a web browser, or the Outline View, which shows you the structure and hierarchy of your document. You can also use the Split and New Window buttons to view different parts of the same document or different documents at the same time. As you can see, Word has a view for every need and every purpose. You can switch between these views anytime you want 
and you can also customize each view to suit your preferences. You can also use the split and new window buttons to view different parts of the same document or different documents at the same time. Inserting text is the most basic and essential task that you can do in Word, and it's very easy and intuitive. All you need is a keyboard and a mouse and you're ready to go. So let's see how it works. When you open Word and select New Blank Document, you'll see a blank document with a blinking vertical line on the top left corner. This line is called the text cursor, and it shows you where the new text will be inserted. Once you have entered some text, you, will, you can move the text cursor by clicking anywhere on the document with your mouse, or by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now, to insert text, all you have to do is start typing on your keyboard. As you type, the text will appear on the document and the text cursor will move to the right, indicating the new position where the next character will be inserted. You can also use the spacebar to insert spaces between words and the backspace key to delete the characters to the left of the text cursor. One thing to note is that Word has an automatic line break feature, which means that when you reach the end of a line, the text will automatically move to the next line without you having to press the enter key. This is very convenient and helpful because it saves you time and effort and it also adjusts the text to fit the width of your document. However, sometimes you might want to manually interrupt a line and start a new paragraph. In this case, you need to press the enter key, which will insert a paragraph mark at the end of the line and move the text cursor to the beginning of the next line. This would also create some space between the paragraphs, which will make your document look more organised and readable. You can also use the Enter key to insert black lines in your document if you want to create some separation between different parts of your text. We'll talk more about paragraphs and how to format them in a later lesson, but for now, let's practice inserting some text into your document. I'm going to type a sentence here and you can follow along with me, or you can type your own text. As you can see, inserting text in Word is very simple and straightforward. You can type as much text as you want, and Word will automatically adjust the text to fit the document. You can also use the Enter key to enter new paragraphs and blank lines. And you can move the text cursor by clicking your mouse and using the arrow keys. Sometimes you might want to insert some characters or symbols that are not available on your keyboard such as a mathematical symbol or foreign letters or legal marks. Word has a huge collection of these symbols and you can easily insert them into your document by using the symbol button on the insert tab. So let's see how it works. On the insert tab, on the right side, you'll see a button with a Greek letter on it. This is the symbol button and if you click on it, you'll see a drop down menu with some of the most used symbols that you can insert. For example, you can insert the degree symbol, the euro symbol, the pi symbol, and many more. All you have to do is click on the symbol you want, and it will appear on your document where your text cursor is. But what if the symbol that you want is not on the menu? Well, don't worry, because Word has many more symbols that you can choose from. To see them, you need to click on the More Symbols option at the bottom of the menu. This will open a dialog box called Symbol which has two tabs, Symbol and Special Characters. On the Symbols tab, you can see hundreds of symbols and letters that you can insert into your document. You can also change the font and the subset of the symbols to find the one that you need. For example, you can find symbols in Latin, Greek and other languages, as well as symbols for mathematics, science, music and more. To insert a symbol, just click on it and then click on the Insert button at the bottom of the dialog box. You can also see the shortcut key for the symbol 
if there is one, and you can use it to insert the symbol faster. On the special characters tab, you can see some characters that have special meaning or functions in Word, such as the paragraph mark, the section mark, the ellipsis, and the non-breaking space. You can also see the keyboard combinations that you can use to insert these characters directly from the keyboard. For example, you can press Alt, Control and C to insert the copyright symbol, or you can press Alt, Control and R to insert the registered trademark symbol. To insert a special character, just click on it and then click on the insert button at the bottom of the dialog box again. As you can see, Word has a lot of symbols and special characters that you can insert into your document to make it more expressive and professional. You can use the symbol button on the insert tab or the keyboard shortcuts to insert them quickly and easily. You can also use the symbol dialog box to find and insert any symbol that you want. That's a wrap for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Remember, practice makes perfect, so go ahead and try out the techniques we covered today. Don't forget, we've got plenty more videos to come covering all aspects of ICDL Plus word processing, from basic formatting to advanced techniques. We'll make sure you master the program like a pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.